I would like to thank the organizers very much for uh, being invited. It's a great pleasure for me, in particular in this place, which has, in fact, encouraged my early efforts in the subject many times. I've lectured here around 1980 on the beginnings of the quartic oscillator. Uh, although I did, did not belong to this institute, they invited me several times, and I'm very grateful for that as well. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to uh, speak on a highly speculative subject, and I prefer to warn you that there's very little uh, uh, solid results, and my uh, goal is, uh, in particular, to try to awaken uh, topic which I feel has been asleep for over 30 years and I just would, would not like it to be uh, asleep for a hundred years like uh, as in the fairy tales. So if I could, uh, 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 if I could awake uh, the interest of researchers on uh, the problems and what to do, that, that would be my goal. I, so I will be mostly telling you a story. Uh, it's not going to be uh, solid mathematics, it's going to be uh, speculations leading to conjectures and uh, it will be done on a rather personal note. Uh, I would also like to add, uh, to finish this general blurb that I've, in fact, I've been uh, disconnected from uh, resurgence for quite a long time, so if you feel that I'm not saying, I'm saying incorrect or incomplete things. I very much welcome uh, your uh, feedback during the talk. Okay, so um, now this is complete, uh, completely general and I can skip on this very quickly. Um, in quantum mechanics, the fundamental <coughs> parameter is Planck's constant and uh, quantum resurgence is the study of resurgence with respect uh, to uh, th uh, the inverse Planck's constant, which will be uh, called X in this talk, uh, as an asymptotic large parameter, uh, complex in, ge in general. Uh, although, of course, it, it's a constant in real life. Uh, so uh, this is the stationary Schrodinger equation, which will be the, so the only focus of our uh, interest here. So, <coughs> spec uh, we study uh, mostly uh, spectral functions. Uh, in, in this talk, a spectral function uh, designates uh, symmetric functions of the eigenvalues. And just again to uh, fix ideas, I'm taking a confining potential uh, uh, which has only positive, say, uh, uh, positive discrete eigenvalues accumulating to plus infinity, like the harmonic or, the or quartic oscillator, for instance, uh, in one or several dimensions. So spectral functions are symmetric functions of the spectra of the, of the eigenvalues E k, and uh, they naturally they, they will depend uh, on. Uh, Planck's constant, because uh, the problem is parameterized by it. And uh, it, it, the fact is that quite a number of spectral functions can admit uh, asymptotic um, expansions of this form here. That is a seri formal series in, inver in inverse powers of Planck's constant. Uh, which do not necessarily have to be uh, integer, but uh, in fact they will be in, in practice, and times exponentials, so exponentially small quantities. And the known fact is, well, in case, cases that have been treated, is that the Borel transform of, this, uh, uh, of such functions uh, can, be can have a non-zero radius of convergence and can so sometimes be end endlessly analytically continued to a Riemann surface which, with only isolated singularities. And then you recover, you recover uh, uh, the original function by uh, Laplace resummation. Now, uh, Quite often, the singularities of the Borel transform can be located, and sometimes the germs can be expanded 
using uh, classical transport equations because the semi-classical uh, correspondence principle in mathematical terms says that uh, singularities are propagated of, of the solutions. In some cases, uh, now that's uh, the really interesting thing, the, various, the germ at various singularities can be explicitly interrelated and that's the resurgence of bridge equations uh, uh, which Ekal has uh, introduced in the 80s. <coughs> now, uh, after later it happened in 1D uh, that uh, the resurgent description could be translated back into uh, the, the original uh, space into functional equations which happen to be rich enough so that in fact the Sturm-Liouville problem, say, uh, in one, because we're in one dimensional, uh, can be uh, qu quantum integrated. But, uh, th and this is the case now for uh, uh, polynomial potentials in one dimension. But this uh, is only in one dimension. And in fact, the techniques uh, which have been used in quantum resurgence up to now are very much uh, uh, ordinary dif differential equation techniques pushed to, uh, to their limits somehow. But uh, the real world is not one-dimensional. You still have, uh, however, propagation, some singularity propagation principles, like the Yegorov theorem, for instance. Uh, in th but uh, it's well known that uh, ordinary differential equation techniques break down for the stationary Schrodinger equation in higher dimension than one. So we are really uh, stuck and we really think of uh, genuinely uh, multidimensional problems, problems which are not separable, not uh, uh, integrable, say. A real partial differential uh, equation. Okay. So, uh, higher dimensional quantum uh, mechanics is a puzzle. If you want to uh, extend uh, the, uh, what is known by in 1D. First of all, uh, the one dimensional treatment of Schrödinger, so this is the, the, the sort of black hole here, uh, which we don't know what, how to attack it. So we are, tr we are going to a first survey uh, four possible uh, ways of, of, of doing it. Uh, first of all, uh, the one, as I alluded to, the one-dimensional treatment of Schrodinger equation is a very much ordinary differential equation uh, technique, which is called the WKB method, in fact. And this is well known that it's already inapplicable already in the real domain. Uh, sorry, I, have, I forgot to uh, say one thing um, before I, I go here. Uh, so this is a sort of a, a table where we will uh, register our, prog our progress or understanding what we, which we can do. Uh, I separate, I have a special line for real analysis and complex analysis. Uh, you, th you may, th of course we understand that uh, Resurgence is about is very much a complex analytic uh, uh, problem. However, uh, the first thing to find in resurgence is isolated singularities somehow, and it, the fact is that in uh, many problems there are more results, known mathematical results in particular, on the using real analysis than complex analysis. So uh, there we have to um, take a stage where we discuss uh, real problems. And um, indeed, if, for instance, the uh, most striking thing is that if, uh, in order to ha have isolated singularities in the complex domain, it is necessary that al already on the real line you have isolated singularities, otherwise you are stuck. So, uh, Real analysis has, plays a role in, the, in this uh, conjectural discussion. Okay, so that's one thing. It's, we cannot apply, even the real WKB method uh, cannot, will no, is known not to work in higher dimension for uh, deep topological reasons. <coughs> uh, 
Now, an, another uh, an area where some uh, multidimensional results are known in higher di di dimension is the integrals. Like Professor Konsevich discussed yesterday, uh, if you, you, you can write um, a multidimensional integral with a uh, phase function with, with, one, with 1 over h bar in the exponent and uh, this uh, can be handled by the saddle point method and there is an exact saddle point method which is uh, uh, to, uh, uh, largely understood in a higher dimension. However, it is irrelevant to the Schrodinger equation unless you can uh, effectively develop uh, the method for um, d equal infinity and, well, I was very I'm very excited by Professor Konsevich's talk because uh, this is a possibility. However, I'm not aware of any uh, um, concrete uh, full re results that can be obtained uh, currently for uh, the Schrodinger equation. Again, I'm happy to be corrected if I'm wrong. Uh, the, uh, another possible approach is to use uh, D-dimensional singularity analysis and there the result is, there is a limited rigorous result but very important which is the Poisson formula on manifolds and this unfortunately as far as I know again is only uh, known on the real domain for real singularities and for homogeneous op operators in a certain sense. And finally, the, 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 the method that will uh, help us the most will be a singularity analysis using the Balian block approach, uh, which I will explain later, uh, which can uh, begin to describe a Riemann surface of, uh, like we want, but it doesn't, uh, again, uh, as far as I know, it is not uh, computationally effective that, to the point that it can uh, dis fully describe the solution of the problem that you want. Okay, um, so now we are going, I'm going to do a crash survey of uh, d equal 1 again uh, not in the usual, with not using the usual uh, approach because uh, it will not work in 1D uh, in higher dimension. So uh, I will focus on a type of spectral function which I, I call theta function because that's the one that has uh, some degree of generalization to higher dimension. So uh, once a spectral function uh, for a uh, confining potential is uh, the so this sum here, to, which I call the trace e to the minus tau h hat, or uh, well, I should have written t here actually, but never mind. Uh, and uh, a function like this. And for the type of spectrum that I've uh, described before, uh, this function will be holomorphic, uh, trivially sort of holomorphic on the real, on the real half plane. Uh, real tau positive half plane, sorry. Uh, but this is sort of a sort of trivial analyticity which uh, you cannot do very much with. Uh, for the harmonic potential, the spectrum is linear. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's the odd integers here. The pa the pa this partition function is of course known in closed form and there is a miracle. It's a meromorphic function. So first of all, it has an endless analytical continuation and moreover, it has only poles. And that's, this identity here is in fact the uh, generating form of the Poisson summation formula. So here is a, a rough sketch of the singular structure of the, uh, of the, uh, of the partition function. You have simple poles and uh, complete meromorphic structure and that's the Poisson summation formula. So in, in a way th this is uh, trivial and immediately settled. Now the next <coughs> thing we try, we can try is a anharmonic uh, homogeneous uh, potential. Then the spectrum grows uh, faster than linearly and uh, 
it, therefore, it has a vanishing density uh, asymptotically. Now, there, there is a, a, a result of, um, in the thesis of uh, somebody called Vladimir Bernstein in 1930, who showed that if you write this function for um, a sequence EK such that um, its asymptotic density is less than uh, delta, density asymptotic. I'm, I'm just saying it in, in, in rough words. Then, uh, on any subinterval of the imaginary axis of length 2 pi delta, there is a singularity of the partition function. And the fact that, so the fact that the asymptotic density vanishes implies that the, the singularities are dense on the imaginary axis. And therefore, uh, uh, the, this is a natural boundary. So you have trivial analyticity, but a natural boundary. So it's finished. You, you cannot do anything. By the way, <coughs> when I'm saying real here, I, of course, I've chosen to rotate time in a sense. So uh, for me, uh, r this can also be considered as a real axis because it's a, it's a real uh, uh, sub, uh, subset of, of the, in a way, of the imaginary plane, of course. And uh, the most uh, trivial uh, known example is the Jacobi theta function, which is obtained for ek equal k, k squared. And th there you, it's well known that there is a natural boundary. But this is uh, also true here. OK, so if the problem is the asymptotic vanishing density, the trick is, one trick is to uh, replace the original operator h hat, Schrodinger operator, by a power. This is a non-integer uh, non power of the operator. And of course, the spectrum is, the, is this. And therefore, you get a new, a new function which has uh, uh, this form. Then, uh, here comes, so we are in this sector here, uh, the real WKB method to s find asymptotically the solutions and the spectrum of this problem. And uh, the output for the spectrum is the Bohr-Sommerfeld uh, condition, quant, uh, spectral condition, or quantization, often called quantization rule, spectral formula, say. I will not, I mean, I suppose you have all heard about this method. I will not explain how it works, but the fact is that if you consider this, uh, this is the classical action at energy E, and the problem is homogeneous, so it scales. That uh, is an algebraic help here. So you can, re you can switch to a single variable, which we call x, which is a combination of w w inverse Planck's constant and this strange power of the energy. Then the fact is that there is a complete quantization formula. There is a asymptotic, formal asymptotic series which begins by, with x and with corrections, such that the xk, which is the uh, value of x for ek, uh, the xk are given by uh, sampling this function at half integers. That's the statement of the Bose-Sommerfeld condition. You, then you can invert this. You can invert this into uh, an asymptotic expansion of the form xk uh, is k plus a half plus uh, something over k plus a half plus a2 over, I mean, you have a power. A descend, uh, <coughs> xk is approximately k plus a half, but the, and there are asymptotic corrections. I will call this asymptotic perturbation. The, so you are close to the harmonic spectrum, in a way, up to a constant factor, but you have asymptotic perturbations. Now, if you write sum of e to the minus tau xk, this will begin with sum of e to the minus tau k 
k plus a half, which is the linear version before here. But uh, the effect of the corrections can be uh, understood as applying a series in uh, in powers of inverse differentiation or integration. So some you apply some series of this form to the original function. And of course, applying this to a function which has poles will generate logarithms and then uh, tau times log tau and so on. So you will get ramified something. At the in the end, you um, you expect to obtain uh, some uh, a function where the poles have been replaced by singular logarithmic singularities. So here you will have at every singularity expect to have some formal formally holomorphic germ times log of uh, at this origin. <coughs> okay, so to understand this a little better, we uh, introduce. Um, the, these two spectral functions, the staircase function, this theta actually, in, in unfortunate notation I realize this is the heavy side step function here, and it shouldn't be confused with the, uh, my other theta, uh, but it's standard notation also. So uh, theta uh, in terms of the function f of x, and uh, this you write again using the Poisson summation formula, it's uh, f of x plus sum of exponentials of f of x, like this. This is the distribution Poisson uh, formula in the variable f. Uh, and now the next trick is to separate f into the divergent part that asymptotically diverges, which is x, and you exponentiate the remainder. So we call this phi of x, then this rewrites as x plus log phi plus powers of phi. And phi, uh, phi is, sorry, is an asymptotic power series because this exponentiates well. Okay, now you realize that this uh, spectral staircase is simply the Laplace transform of uh, the theta function, of this theta function, where now again I've uh, replaced, as I, as I announced before, I replaced the original ek by their powers, by this power, and so. Uh, we have this, for this formula here translates in the Borel plane of the function th of the big theta function as a in, in this form of structure, where the, these means just the way the, the, the residues uh, or the weights, the leading weights that you have on these singularities. So each, so this remind you, this was the harmonic with poles. And the fact that we applied asymptotic perturbations uh, made it generic, and the generic result, of course, is, is not meromorphic, it's ramified. Uh, these cuts here are just a graphical way uh, of alluding to the fact that we um, have singularities of the form sum. At, for instance, at the origin, you have a, a singularity of the form a n tau n log of tau plus zero to the n. Uh, uh, sorry, S something like this. So the fact that you, uh, this is a distribution, of course, um, in the standard uh, notation. So we are not really in the complex plane. We are in it at an infinitesimal vicinity of the real axis. So this is still a real singularity analysis. But I drew very, very small cuts we should which you th should think of as infinitesimal cuts. It's just a graphical uh, trick. So the general uh, theta uh, will have poles and logarithmic singularities which are encoded in this formula. And when you decode the formula, uh, sorry, uh, when you decode the formula, what you, you see that in fact at the origin the uh, singularity is the Borel transform of log phi. Remember, uh, phi of x was exponential of 2 pi i b1 over x plus. So, and uh, at here, you have phi. 
phi squared, phi cube, these are here. So these singularities are strongly interrelated. And this is a form of resurgence which should have been, could have been found 100 years ago because the, the, the constraint is that these should sum up to a staircase function. And that's, that means that the singularities at the various uh, levels are strongly uh, uh, interlocked. Um, now, uh, another rem physicist remark is that uh, the Bose-Sommerfeld quantization condition involves the action uh, around one traversal of the periodic orbit of the problem at energy E. This is a, a contour integral the, and this is the classical trajectory. This is one traversal and it gives the, essentially the classical action X. Uh, the, so you can, uh, and this X uh, is uh, essentially um, also um, the amount by which you have, to, you have translated to come, here, to come up here. And likewise, in the, in the WKB interpretation of the Bose-Omerfeld formula, you can think of this as the contribution of the repeated, of the trajectory repeated twice, uh, three times. So you can, you can think of these as uh, uh, traces of uh, the periodic orb orbit repetitions which uh, give you the locations of the singularities of this theta of tau. Now, uh, so that was the real WKB method. Then, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the real WKB method has a complete, complex extension and I've contributed to show that this complex WKB method can be made exact in one, uh, for, for say polynomial potentials. And when you do that, you uh, break the barrier of this, oops, you break the barrier of the real axis and you can, because, thanks to the fact that on the real axis the singularities were isolated, you can go beyond. The complex WKB method tells you that, in, that the picture that was true on, the, on this real axis somehow carries over into the complex world. And here are, <coughs> see the, here is the uh, diagram of the uh, singular structure of this function for the quartic problem where it's essentially the only case where it can be uh, uh, read uh, pretty easily we, on a diagram. And so you have, you do have the real orbits here, but now you have branch cuts extending to infinity. The function is endlessly analytically continuable and you find new singularities in the complex range where, and these correspond precisely to complex periodic orbits of this problem, which are the, the classical orbits of, of Q4 are um, elliptic, Jacobi elliptic functions and the generating orbits, in fact, uh, are the, shor the shortest orbits of the problem, are, the, are not in the real, but they are these two here, this one and its complex conjugate. So, and <coughs> the algebra that I described you before, that here you have the log of a phi, here phi, phi squared, phi cube, it goes over into the complex world. You have a, something, a function analogous to um, phi, but corresponding to each. You have a phi 1 uh, corresponding to this orbit, a phi 2 corresponding to this orbit here, and each time you go up this, in this direction, you gain a power of phi 1 in the uh, resurgence, uh, and uh, each time you uh, advance in this direction, you gain a power of phi 2. Uh, when I say power, I should have said, of course, the powers are in the multiplicative uh, representation. In the Borel plane, there are convolution powers. And all that can be described. You see the weights can also be described. They are uh, combinatorial weights, essentially. So you can, and the uh, additional thing which we know thanks to the complex WKB method, is that we are also able 
to find the similar singular analysis for all the for these generating functions and then by convolution for all the functions that occur in every possible cut. So, and that's really what the complex WKB method in one dimension is able to tell us. And uh, that we won't have in higher dimension. So before I go to several dimensions, I just uh, give you an illusion of what works in general. In general, the real WKB method works. The Bosom affair spectral formula works. Provi now, we, are, we have a non-homogeneous problem, so it's a little more complicated. But what saves our life is that in one dimension, <coughs> you can uh, you can devise a function f of h hat of the Schrodinger operator such, such that the spectrum is quasi-linear. In, in the homogeneous case, remember it was h hat uh, uh, n plus 2 over 2n, the uh, uh, non, uh, power of h hat. In the general homogeneous case, it doesn't work. But what you can do is you take the action as function of the energy. It classically, you have sum of PDQ defines action, which is a uh, function of the energy on which you integrate, of the, of the curve on which you integrate. And it is well known, th that's again the bose sommerfeld rule, that this, uh, this uh, gives you a quasi-linear spectrum, that is a spectrum xk, which is a k plus a half plus corrections. And therefore, the, the general picture I drew on the, on the real world goes over. And uh, the, as far as the complex WKB method is concerned, it has been, thanks to uh, later workers, um, it has been uh, rig uh, r rather rigorously established for, um, say, the polynomial, any polynomial potential. Now, I am aware and, uh, that th there seems to be uh, uh, one loophole in the proof of resurgence. So, uh, and uh, which uh, Pham has uh, repeatedly uh, quoted in the 90s. And uh, he said that when he retired that he would work on it and then he didn't do it. And I'm not, aware, I'm not sure that, there, uh, that uh, a certain, that one loophole in the proof has uh, is still present or not, but as far as computations are concerned, we can do them and uh, they work very nicely. And uh, so, uh, at least for polynomial potentials, uh, it works. I would like to uh, uh, have a wo uh, sad word for uh, uh, a colleague who actually uh, deceased in a very young age, Tatsuya Koike, because he also um, made very, very valuable uh, contribution to extend uh, the exact WKP method to a rational to to potentials with poles, and uh, we miss him a lot. Uh, okay, now the next well uh, uh, the following page. So this fi I'm finished with one D. Uh, the next uh, thing is now we enter the uh, higher dimensional world. For the now. Uh, the only uh, result about uh, location of, of singularities for a spectral function that I know of is uh, a series of uh, results due uh, to Chazarin and Dostemat Gilmin. Uh, first, Chazarin, working on the Laplace operator on a compact Riemannian manifold, uh, he said, Oh, but you must take the spectrum of uh, the wave of the squ square root of the Laplacian. To form the wave, what we call the wave group, the pro wave propagator, and take its trace as a distribution. This is a well-defined distribution on the real line. So we are in real T, which will be imaginary tau later. And this is the function you consider. It is a distribution, and the only the singular support is uh, the set of lengths of real periodic geodesics. Uh, zero is considered as a length. It's a very important singularity, but uh, uh, you might not think of it, but it has to be included. The generalization of this result is 
that for um, by Dusselmatt and Gilmin is that you can replace the Laplacian by a elliptic pseudo differential operator of any order, but it has to be homogeneous, order m greater than zero. Uh, m may need not be uh, an integer, uh, and uh, so this uh, you again have this positive sp spectrum, and now you take the you have to take the spectrum of f of p equal p to the 1 over m. Again, this, has a, this is similar to what we did in 1D, that we, you take a, a function to unwarp the spectrum somehow. And then the, the, the whole point is that this operator is of order 1. It's very important. Homogeneity of order 1 is the very important uh, property because it implies the propagation of singularities. So you can follow the singularities and when you take the trace you find them uh, where, the, where, where you see where the geo, uh, so this function again is now singular at the periods of closed big or periodic bi characteristics. That's uh, the result. Okay. Uh, now the, let me dispel one possible confusion. In higher dimension, it is not possible to invent a. Uh, transformation of the operator which will make the spectrum quasi-linear. So this here, while superficially it looks like what we did in one dimension, it does something completely different. It does, it, it will, it's only possible because you have homogeneity and so we are here, in fact. At the moment we are here. Chazarin, uh, Dostaymat, uh, Gilmin. On the real end. Uh, Okay, uh, so a very simple. First, let me begin with a trivial example. If you take the one D Lap again, if you take the one-dimensional Laplacian, then we are here. The, the eigenvalues are k squared, so the transformation of Dostoevsky uh, or Chazarin is simply you. This becomes k, so you, we fall back on here. So that's here the, the, the overlap is perfect, but in 1D. Another example, next, uh, more interesting, is the <coughs> two dimensional sphere. Then the eigenvalues are lambda k, lambda j equal j, j plus 1 with multiplicity 2j plus 1. Now it's Pretty nasty if you take the square root of this. An obvious idea is to replace this by lambda k, by lamb by to say that x k squared is lambda j plus one fourth, and that's j plus one half. And then, if you take trace of uh, um, trace of uh, sum of e to the minus tau xj, you obtain essentially uh, um, you obtain essentially the same thing as, as uh, for the linear spectrum. You, you obtain, but because of the multiplicities you apply this differentiation here, so you obtain uh, something which I will still put into the linear spectrum which is um, exactly the same picture as here, except that you replace uh, the simple poles by double poles. Okay, but so that's fine. Uh, the problem again is that we need to be homogeneous. Uh, another remark is, so now, in higher dimension there is one and only, and only one asymptotic series that we, I know of with that which we can handle. And that's the so-called uh, sundaram playel expansion, or sometimes, uh, uh, yeah. And that takes the, theta, the original theta function, that is the trace of the, e uh, of the Laplacian, of the exponential of the Laplacian itself, and a uh, very old result is that for the Laplace operator and uh, other differential operators as well, 
it has an expansion for t tending to zero. Now this again, rem remember, this is only holomorphic in the on the real side, on the right side of the half, half plane, and therefore let's say we take t tending to zero from above on the real axis. And then you have a complete asymptotic expansion with, ration, with uh, rational powers, something which looks something like this. Okay, now, uh, so, but w we are puzzled because uh, Deussemat, I mean, Chazarin, tells you that you take the square root. And uh, for the square root, you don't have such a result. So, what's the, uh, what's the connection between um, uh, between uh, this and this. Okay, uh, let me just draw a picture here. Uh, I'm, uh, the picture that Chazarin gives you resembles the picture I showed for the Boson Merfeld rule in one dimension. That is, you have a singulari as, uh, singularity at zero. And then you have uh, singularities at the periodic orbit, at the length of periodic orbits here. And so I, exactly as before, we are in the real domain, so I draw infinitesimal cuts to, rip, to say that here you have, um, you have singularity expansion possible, but in the real, in the t terms of real distributions. Now, these uh, I'm going now to describe what happens at, uh, for the main singularity at tau equals zero at, at tau equals zero in this uh, thing here. So uh, let's um, let's consider some auxiliary spectral functions, which are also very important in their own right. The resolvent trace here, which is the Laplace transform of the theta of the original theta function. And therefore, it has an expansion, a uh, related expansion here. In, uh, this expansion is for large lambda. Uh, the coefficients are related, and often this expansion is called the Weil, the Hermann Weil series. Now, uh, the zeta function, the spectral zeta function, is simply the sum of the powers of the eigenvalues, and this is obtained by performing a Mellin transform of the theta function and dividing my gamma. The, it's a standard result of Mellin theory that uh, an, exp an asymptotic expansion like this translates in the sing into a meromorphic structure for eta of s. That is, the exponents give you the location of the poles and the coefficients give you the residues. You divide by gamma and you get the the similar uh, meromorphic structure of zeta of s. And now what we do is, let's look at this, at the function uh, th uh, theta of tau, sum from 0 to infinity, e to the minus tau lambda to the 1. Now the eigenvalues raised to the power 1 over m. The trick to understand this is to go through, the, through its zeta function, because the zeta function of this is trivially uh, little zeta of s over m. So what we do is that we take the uh, singularity uh, description of zeta of s over m, we, and we go up again, we multiply by gamma, and we go back now, to, uh, we do the inverse operation, and, and that means that we can get the, uh, as, the asymptotic description of theta of tau at zero. And that, this is what you get. You get uh, first a finite sum of polar terms. W the um, strongest singularity is a pole of order d, where d is the dimension. And then all the other terms give you this uh, expansion where you have t to, uh, in integer powers of t, so this is a formal series of a holomorphic germ, formally, and you have log t. And plus, the problem is that when you undo, when you go up backwards, you the coefficients of the regular terms are not generally available. They are values of the zeta function at non-integer uh, places, 
in general. And then, so that means that the regular part, this function has a singular part, which is in one, sort of one one correspondence with the original expansion, but the regular part is not accessible, it's transcendental. And now the important thing is that in the, in the coefficients of the, of the singular part, you have this factorial n here. And that means if you, that, in effect, this series here, that is the series of the singularity here, is the Borel transform of Wn. Because in Wn you have gamma of, you have this gamma factor, which is equivalent to 1 over gamma of 1 over, of this gamma by the functional relation for the gamma function. So up to little, uh, Alg trivial algebraic transformations, you, th you should think of, of this thing here as the Borel transform of the Weyl series. And that's, that's, the, uh, that's the only thing which is analogous uh, to the 1D case. Remember, in 1D case, we had shown that the uh, singular in the Bohr-Sommerfeld problem, the um, the singularity at the origin was the Borel transform of uh, yes of f of the Borel of the Bohr-Sommerfeld series. So I don't understand this part. This is yeah. exponential of i t, and this all this habit for real t. Let's say. Uh, yes, that's real, and and I I'm just using uh, I'm working on uh, um, I'm I'm using a different variable. No, but uh, these things is a kind of uh, Poisson transformation is when both sides you take the Poisson formula gives but th there is no Poisson formula here because for the sphere no there's no Poisson formula it's not a, it's a Poisson really it's called no, Poisson. then what is the connection between this formula and that thing it's because this t is real here tau is real here and there I but no but the connection is at this level the, the, the tau you write i t equal tau here this or here it's just a change of variable the, the hyperbolic sign there because this gives sign and this gives sign hyperbolic. So yeah, because I'm I'm working in the tau variable. Well, it's a problem. Of course, you, you it's a problem of a choice of notation. I it's more convenient for some reason to have a, a cuts uh, more or less horizontal. So I I chose to work in the tau variable. But if you want, you can rewrite everything in the this t variable. Does make sense when it's. This, this formula, uh, this is for real t, so, but here, but, uh, but I, 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 I'm, we are not using this, except to identify that uh, here you have a singularity, which is the Borel transform of... How do you define zeta function then? <laughs> zeta function is... For, for it, right? because... <coughs> zeta function does not use t, t it's... Uh, here, here t, t is real. This is, this is holomorphic in... The, the original theta of t is uh, holomorphic here and uh, undefined here, and you integrate on the on the real t line. You make a Laplace transform for this and a Mellin transform for the zeta function. Mm. Okay. Uh, now the. You can, you can likewise, but it's more complicated, compute the singular expansions that you obtain at the various lengths of periodic orbits. And the code word for this is the method of quantum Birkhoff normal forms. For instance, uh, C. Zeldich's work. Uh, you can compute those series. Uh, you ha there are the coefficients are certain spectral invariants. It's horribly complicated. and. Uh, it's a, I think it's a formal computation. I'm not sure anybody knows uh, th whether those uh, series are uh, Borel summable, for instance. But in principle, you have some access, uh, uh, order by order, to uh, the singular expansions here. Again, the, um, this theory only says something about the singular parts. It says nothing about the regular parts. Those are unknown. Now. Next example, with Cartier in, in, in the 90s, we uh, looked at the spectrum of the compact hyperbolic surface. 
uh, on two dimension where you can use you have at your disposal a very convenient tool which is called the Zellberg trace formula the Zellberg trace formula is essentially says is, is, is a generalization of the Poisson summation formula which says that if you uh, first it says don't look at so the spectrum is lambda k we don't look at lambda k but we look at lambda k minus one fourth uh, this minus plus in the case of the sphere this was uh, we looked at square root of minus delta plus one fourth and this one here is the cur is the Gaussian curvature in fact so in the Selberg trace formula um, the uh, object of interest is this and so we uh, write x k equals square root of lambda k minus one fourth as uh, so it's not exact. We don't exact. We make a little change with respect to Chazarin, uh, who take the square root of the Laplacian. We have a little shift here. But again, this um, uh, x k and lambda k and square root of lambda k are asymptotic perturbations of each other. So we are in the. We are not uh, really making anything harmful. And this replacement is going to make things extremely simple. The Selberg trace formula, which is a generalization of the Poisson trace formula, is a sort of machine which, um, uh, spit, uh, which is a spectral function evaluator. You give, you give it a spectral function that is a, a symmetric function of xk, and it, tell, it gives you a formula for it in terms of the uh, periodic geodesic length. So you, uh, it does the work for you, in fact. And when you, you have to work a little bit, but when you apply it, to uh, uh, this theta function, you have an, so a rather explicit um, formula. And from the, on the formula, you can read that this function, theta of tau, has in fact a meromorphic continuation for all complex tau, which is singular at the length of periodic geodesics as predicted by uh, Chazarin. Uh, first of all, the two di there are two differences. With uh, Chazarin, that uh, here it's the diagram on the left. That first of all, the singularities are poles and not branch cuts, so this, it's really a meromorphic function, and that comes from the very special nature of the problem. It's a little bit like the harmonic oscillator for the uh, for these uh, negative curvature problems. And uh, the other thing that uh, the, form the Selberg trace formula uncovers for you is that you have singularities in the... C c when you do the, the meromorphic continuation, you discover that you have singularities at minus 2 pi, minus 4 pi, minus 6 pi. And this has a very natural interpretation that, uh, as Professor Konsevich already uh, said yesterday, that uh, the, uh, the periodic geodesics on the... Surf, negatively curved surface, when you continue them into the imaginary time direction, they become geodesics on a, on a real sphere. And those geodesics are periodic, like the geodesics of the sphere. And so you're not surprised that, well, first of all, we are very happy because we have a complex extension of the... Uh, here, you, you obtain something in this domain for the Selberg trace formula. And the, you obtain what you uh, uh, would expect as, as a physicist, that is, the real result has a natural extension to the complex domain. So we are very, at this point, we are very happy, but again, this is an exceptional problem with homogeneity and, which, uh, and moreover with exceptional uh, meromorphic structure. Uh, here, in fact, I should have plotted not the harmonic oscillator, but the spectrum of the sphere, but again, it, there is a very simple relation between the two. Well, why are there no geodesics in the quadrants? Well, it's, I think, the, I, to my knowledge, that's all there is. I, again, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, in the, anyway, the Selberg trace formula only gives you singularities here. That's clear. The, here, the, the singularities here on the imaginary line are simple poles, uh, because, and that that's what Chazarin predicts uh, uh, 
at the, to leading order because the ge those geodesics are isolated. On the other hand, uh, the ge periodic geodesics on the sphere are degenerate and they give you double poles exactly like they gave in the, uh, in the case for the sphere. So, uh, so we think, so now that comes the thing, we would like a result like Chazarin and Distermat Gilmin for, uh, again, for homogeneous problems perhaps, but not, not exceptional, that would involve, uh, that would give you singularities at, in, at complex orbit periods as well. And this is a big question mark for me. So that's the first question mark. Can we uh, extend the chazarin doistema gilmin results into the complex domain to obtain, uh, hopefully, um, resurgence, resurgent big theta functions? In fact, there are some uh, positive signs. Uh, for quantum billiards, which are similar to uh, compact manifolds in, in some sense, um, uh, Barry Howells studied high order of Vi series, and on certain uh, very strange shaped billiards, they obtained that the high order of, of Vi series were governed by certain complex periodic uh, orbits. So, there is a hope to find something here, but I'm not aware of any, any, uh, any result. Okay, that, now, we, uh, the Balian block uh, representation of quantum mechanics is what will uh, help us the most. They, uh, the, well, let me uh, skip the details because I'm beginning to be late. Uh, the big idea of Balian block was to take the Schrodinger problem and to make a Laplace transform with respect to one over Planck's constant. So, uh, you, you take x, you take psi of x equals sum of e to the minus x over h bar, x uh, tau, sum psi tilde, uh, if psi is the solution. I mean, you, you transform everything into the, uh, formally into uh, the, say, the Borel plane of 1 over h bar. They didn't, although they didn't study Borel summation per se, unfortunately. But what they found is, of course, the, the, the great thing in that transformation is that the Schrodinger equation becomes a um, partial differential operator, which is homogeneous. So we gain, we, uh, for the general problem, we gain a sort of uh, homogeneity which we, ha we did not have before. Uh, remember, now we are, we are asking what's going on here. Uh, so, uh, they uh, replaced the uh, uh, Schrodinger equation by an integral equation for the, uh, for the resolvent kernel. And from this, they, can they found that uh, uh, singularities propagate because it's a homogeneous problem. And they, op they can locate singularities uh, at real and complex classical trajectories. So, uh, in particular, if you take the trace, which gives the, the trace of the resolvent, which leads to the spectral density, you find, by uh, applying the saddle point method, essentially, that the, the singularities shall be located at the actions of real and, and complex classical trajectories of energy E. So, but that, that's a formal but a very helpful result. It gives you the hope that you can uh, opt that you can describe the singular structure of something. The other ingredient is uh, something which physicists like a lot, which is the Gutzwiller trace formula. The Gutzwiller trace formula is, uh, was an attempted generalization of the Bohr-Sommerfeld uh, formula. In 1D, remember, uh, the in the Bohr-Sommerfeld formula, we had a spectral staircase and we could write a Poisson summation formula decomposition of the spectral staircase into exponentially uh, things. Uh, here, the spectral staircase is more complicated. It depends on, on the spectral variable E and Planck's constant. And Gutzwiller found that there is a, he wrote a formal periodic sum over real periodic orbits, where here you have a, a sum of asymptotic, formal asymptotic expansions in power of h bar, uh, multiplied, sorry, multiplied by exponential of the action at, of the periodic orbit. 
The problem of this, this has been very popular, this formula, but in somehow it's uh, very ill-defined because all summation diverge. These you expect already in 1D, you know that these will be uh, asymptotically, uh, factorially divergent series. And sometimes they are not even Borel summable because you have singularities on the real axis. And uh, the sum of a periodic orbit is also, also very badly diverges in multidimensional problems because there are too many orbits. Now, if we invoke ba the Balian block representation, this cures the pathology of, of the formula formally. Bec uh, and the cured formula suggests a resurgent structure in high dimensional quantum mechanics. That's the message, the, whole, the main message for the last part of the talk, that you combine the two. That is, you write, it's exactly like, like before, you write a spectral staircase function, but now you write it, you have to write it uh, for as n of eh bar with a new variable, spectral variable, theta of x minus xk of e. And what Balion and Bloch tells you, tell you is that uh, the correct spectral variable is uh, x, one, because that's the one with respect to which you go into the Borel plane. So the spectrum you look at is the spectrum of x at fixed e, which is a parameter. Okay. And so we make this transformation, which is more complicated than simply taking a, a function of the operator, we have a parametric problem now, and when you uh, formally, completely formally write uh, the Goodsfiller trace formula here, what you obtain is a picture like Chazarin, except that this, fun that this function theta of e, which is now the sum of this sum here, has singularities on real time, which is imaginary tau, at the actions, at the i times, the actions of real periodic orbits. So we have a conjecture. This is unfortunately a conjecture, but it's a possible result here which asks for being proved. Unfortunately, because this is a generalized eigenvalue problem, I have no idea of, of what technique to use. Now, combining this um, Balian block rewriting of the Goodsfeller trace formula here and the uh, encouraging results obtained for the hyperbolic uh, problem in two dimensions, I propose the conjecture that the, this theta e of tau could possibly be extended perhaps partially but or completely, I don't know, into the complex tau plane and the singularities should lie at the at the i times the action of real and complex classical periodic orbits of energy E. So that's a, a completely conjectural thing. And uh, of course, we are still very far. So this, uh, here are two question marks. We are very far from a uh, complete resurgent description because we have no idea how to compute these uh, uh, singularities and how to compute the singularities of the singularities and whether there are, they are interrelated as in 1D. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry I... Remark, just in the case of Chazaran, uh, it, it's, it, it's exactly what uh, yesterday proposed. Uh, when you have no potential, just uh, uh, of course, uh, yeah. it gives yeah, a complete picture of what will be. Yeah, yes, I was afraid you were, you were going to give my talk yesterday no, 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 no. <laughs> at some point. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, so, so, so. yeah, yeah it's, uh, but uh, okay, but again, uh, I, th that's the only. That's the only possible entry point I see at the moment in several dimensions. And that's why I would like to push it to, uh, for people to look at it. But there may be others, but I, I just not, don't know how, to, how to, to even to describe them in words, not even speaking of proving it. And also there was a paper a few days ago, but I haven't read it by Don Zegger and somebody else about, I think, exactly the relation of eigenvalues of Laplace on Okay, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's I'd be very interested yeah. to know that. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've not been aware of that. Thank you very much.
Frau Wittner, weil es keinen Kanträger gibt.